Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Myung Jin Unsun. Hello. I'm glad you're here. So I have some questions. Um, many more questions than I have answers, if I have any answers at all. So you, the Buddha, and three pounds of flax, same or different? Where does the sky stop and my breath begin? Where do the clouds stop and the particulate matter from wildfires begin? Where does the river stop and the lake begin? There is an answer to all of them and I'm not going to give it to you because that's not how Kongans work. Sorry to disappoint. One of the things uh, that we practice um, in our Korean divide, uh, devised lineage is we are um, conscious of the fact that in uh, Korean San, the Hwaom, or Huayan, or Flower Garden, or Avatamsaka Sutra plays a pretty major role. Um, and if you're not familiar with the that sutra of four names, it's about 1,600 pages long in the uh, Cleary translation. It enumerates every bodhisattva possible, and then some. So the idea is behind it of the interconnectedness of all dharmas, the unobstructed, unhindered interconnectedness of all dharmas, of all things, of all phenomena. Minui's talk from a couple of weeks ago made me uh, get started on, on this path. So in, in Korean San, we have this influence of Hua Om, right? From the Huayan uh, Sutra. And we're very conscious of this interplay. The 10,000 return to the one. Where does the one return? There are a number of patriarchs in the uh, Huayan sect, a uh, couple of whom are big favorites of mine. So if you wanted to check out, uh, especially Fatsang, uh, there is a YouTube video that is uh, under F-A-T-S-A-N-G, as opposed to F-A-Z-A-N-G, like it would be today. But the Fatsang video is great. I recommend it highly. I'm not even getting royalties for this. And there are other, a couple of books on Huayan uh, process metaphysics and Huayan practice is the title of one of them, I think. Um, there's another one that's a little bit more manageable and bite-sized than that, um, that I think uh, Cleary was also the translator of, I'm not sure. But this pervasive identity of the relative and the absolute comes into play. 
And we can go down a, uh, a purely theoretical, purely intellectual, purely philosophical road with this easily enough. And it's, it's, um, it's fun in a way because it really, it's like playing a mental game of chess with yourself. But in more practical terms, if I look here, I see my laptop and I see all of you on it. Hello. If I go outside, I'm going to see the house. I'm going to go up higher. I'm going to see uh, Florence and then I'll see Northampton and then I'll see, uh, you know, land masses and then after that land masses and water and then I go higher still and I see a planet and go higher still and I see a solar system and a galaxy and so on and so forth. And each one of those elements contains all the others. If one thing among them is different at this moment, the entire universe is different. Which really only makes sense because if something is different, then it's not the same aspect of the universe as it had been just now. So, and given impermanence and changing, 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 it's never the same universe from moment to moment to moment. So if I look at you and I think, hmm, that person is very different from me. I don't like them. They look funny. They smell funny. They sound funny. I don't like them. So I will go away from them. From that view at 30,000 feet, those differences are not apparent. There was um, Shi Dao, I think, uh, wrote a poem that's along the lines of the Jin Jin Ming uh, by Seng San. I'm giving you all these literary references for you to check out. Shi Dao's thing was called uh, Branching Streams Flow in the Darkness. I am one branching stream. You are a branching stream. We don't know where we're going. We don't know actually where we intersect because we're in the proverbial darkness. We're all tributaries, but it's one body of water. When the rivers flow down, where do they stop and the lake begin? What molecule of water is it that separates the two of them so that it's like river, lake, purely separate? Doesn't happen, right? For us to assume in our prevalent sense of selfiness that I'm not a tributary and you're not a tributary. I am a standalone. I am in a bubble. There's me and there's the rest of the universe and I am totally separate from it. And it's just ludicrous. If you think of it in those terms, it's not the universe plus one. It's not me in my little bubble 
surrounded by everything else, but totally separate from it. Everything causes everything else and is caused by everything else. If I make coffee in the morning and the steam comes up and that steam moves off into the atmosphere and that steam moves off into the atmosphere and it mingles in with other clouds, other vapors that become clouds. And then it mingles in with some particulate matter from wildfires these days. And that particulate matter causes rain to fall, which goes back into the earth and it goes into rivers and it goes into the ocean, so on and so forth. And then it once again ends up in my morning coffee. Is it the same water? Is it different water? Where does one water stop and the other one begin? Where do you stop and where do I begin? You think you can answer that? You think you can answer that correctly? I don't know. So, uh, in this Dharma Datu, this Vairakana Buddha totality of everything, not excluding favorable and unfavorable, good, bad, pleasant, unpleasant. It's all intermingled. Samsara is nirvana because all these dualist divisions that we try to impose upon things are just distracting us from seeing the true nature of reality. So a monk asked Tozan, what is Buddha? Tozan at the time was weighing flax. And he answered, three pounds of flax. Now you could think that's just some pithy little Zen kind of response, like, hey, I'm looking at some paper here and, you know, what is Buddha? Oh, the Buddha is a laptop. From the perspective of the interconnectedness of all dharmas, the Buddha is the three, uh, excuse me, three pounds of flax. The three pounds of flax includes the Buddha. The Buddha includes the three pounds of flax. In this totality, there is no differentiation. For convenience sake, yeah. I'll get up in the morning in my bed and I'll do my work and you'll do the same on your end. But you know what? That's petty. It's unimportant. When the Bodhisattva vows to help all beings, not only does all include oneself, the one making the vow, but it includes all beings. Not the ones we like, not the ones we don't think smell funny. Everybody, all sentient beings, we vow to help them all. There is no separation.